All right, so now I've got the full silhouette, even some of the, the tricky parts, except for this last belt. Because if I turn off all of my reference, and when we submit it, we'll have none of our reference turned on. I can see what, what issues we have. I also see that we've got this little hole in there, and there's no real separation between his arm and his foot. So I'm going to take care of that really quick with, I think, a rounded rectangle. And I'm going to use this brighter color. And I'm going to rotate it, Command-T, kind of set it in where it needs to be. And that will help separate the foot. from the arm. And then, if I need to, I can warp it slightly, give it a little bit of extra pizzazz with my curve. Yeah, I think that helps. Yeah, I might not even need that shape at all. Okay, so less is more. Just gonna fill in those little gaps as I see them with shapes underneath. Move some of the layers down through layers. Soften some of them. And then let's get that belt taken care of. And I'll change these colors. Let's see what I want to change them to. Maybe this. And let's give it a little bit of complexity. All right, so. Last thing I might do, I might put a little shadow behind his head. So find the big shape. Yep, got that. Duplicate it. Transform it. <coughs> Extend it bigger, like so. And this shape move lower. Nope, this shape changed color to that color. There we go. Yeah, so this is making sense. Now, all we need is that little extra belt. And I might change this color slightly. Yeah, let's do that. I might change this color slightly. Okay. Let's do the belt. Same old techniques. I'm going to steal from what I already have. Command J, Command T. That allows me to move it. And we've got a lot of complicated shapes here, but obviously a lot of triangles. So maybe it's not even worth using something complex like this yet, but I'm going to try something. Nope. There we go. Yep. 
Yeah. It's getting too confusing. So I'm just going to use the triangle tool. Three sides. Make a little triangle. Transform it. Make it what I need it to be. And then warp it slightly. Give a little bit of that curve, which this artist uses so much. Got to hit return before I can place it. Command T. Place it, scale it. Notice there isn't even a shape connecting. There's just a line. So I'm going to ignore that completely because this is a shape tools exercise. I'm not trying to do lines. I'm not using the line tool at all. Because a line isn't a shape. A line is only one dimension. Shapes have to have height and width. Right, now that I've got that, I can duplicate it, transform it. Hopefully use it for some of these. More complex shapes. And then I can use simpler shapes like just a regular triangle again. Give me what I want. Now you might notice there's a big difference between what are called geometric shapes or mechanical shapes, squares, triangles, rectangles, and organic shapes. And I tend to to favor organic shapes. And different artists generally have preferences, different visual styles. So it bugs me when I have to do super sharp geometric stuff. But good, dynamic, interesting visuals usually contain both. Doesn't mean you have to like it. <laughs> you can command Z within a transform as well and take steps back while you before you've even cemented a transformation, which is helpful. and get the right thing. <coughs> All right, last one. Second to last one. And this will be the last one to get this silhouette finished. Oh, it's so annoying getting these to match. That's where warp comes in. Okay. Now if I turn off the background, I see all I'm missing is the white background, so that's easy. I'm just going to make a new rectangle. Covers everything. 
and I fill it with white. So that everything is shape tools. Okay, so now this is done. So what do I turn in? Well, go ahead and turn your background copy, unlock it, the one that's on top, turn it all the way to 100%. That's the first thing you're gonna submit. And we're gonna save these as JPEGs because we wanna fill in the whole rectangle, even if it's just filled in with white. To the desktop, Carl Shape Tools Composition Exercise, and call this Reference and I'm gonna save it as a JPEG. Now, when we save as a JPEG, which we'll be doing a lot for assignments, whenever it's not free floating, you say save and then it gives you this screen, which gives you the quality options. And generally, we want a quality of around 10, which is the smallest of the maximum range. And then it will show you the preview and for the size of the image, which is about 11 by 14 by 350 pixels per inch, at at 10 quality, this is only gonna take up one megabyte. JPEGs are tiny, right? Instead of the 91 megabytes that all my layers take up. Now, if I turn that off, shape tools take up very little memory. So if I say file, save as, and instead of it being the reference, this will just be my actual exercise. And I do it as a JPEG to the desktop and save it at maximum. Now it's even smaller than one megabyte. See, that's because the computer is not memorizing any pixels here. It's memorizing vectors that are outputting pixels. And I'm gonna save that to the desktop. And then, then I'm gonna upload both of these, both my reference and my shape tools composition to PhotoBucket in the right folder. So we go to PhotoBucket, you go to Digital Art One, Digital Exercises, Exercise 2, Shape Tools, drag and drop into there, that's where you're gonna submit. And because they're, they're small, they should upload fairly quickly. Of course, we've seen how slow PhotoBucket now is in this post-net neutrality age, <laughs> when multiple people are trying to use it. And then we'll label them. That's all there is to it. If you wanna check them, you can double click and open them in preview, and you'll see your reference image and your shape tools composition. All I'm missing is the signature, which adds a nice touch to the original. All right, that's all there is to it. Let me come around and help you guys get there. 